Earlier this week, the Tony nominations came out and oh my gosh, they were kind of brutal. Or at least surprising. I mean, some of it was really good. It was a roller coaster of emotions. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. If this is your first time seeing my face, hi, my name is Kat and I really like musicals. If you really like musicals, hit subscribe to join the musical theater internet cult. Should I start watching Glee? I never watched Glee. We're not a real cult, by the way. Thanks to Karma for sponsoring today's video. Question of the day, what are your thoughts on the Tony nominations? Love them, hate them, totally surprised by them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Real quick, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor. Hi. Today's video is sponsored by Karma, the all-in-one digital shopping assistant that helps you shop smarter. If you didn't know, Karma is an app and a Google Chrome extension that automatically helps you save time and money when you're online shopping. Like right now, I'm in the process of decorating my apartment, so I've been doing a lot of online shopping. I make lists over on Karma to make sure that I'm getting the best deal out there, and I also love all the coupon codes that they fill in at checkout automatically. It's like free money. Here are three reasons you should download Karma today. Number one, it automatically scans the web, finds and applies the best coupon code for you when you're online shopping. Number two, you can plan and organize your shopping by saving items. You can save items from more than 50,000 stores into different shopping lists, and then you'll get real-time price drop and back-in-stock notifications. And number three, you can even earn cash back on purchases. And with all of those spring sales coming up, now is the perfect time to get Karma. Download Karma's free Chrome extension. Click on the link below or visit shop.karmanow.com slash Catherine Steele slash five slash 22. That's shop.karmanow.com slash Catherine Steele slash five slash 22. Thanks again to Karma for sponsoring this segment. And now back to the video. Okay, let's talk about this year's Tony Awards. It's going to take place on Sunday, June 12th at Radio City Music Hall. And in a total contrast to last year's untelevised ceremony, this year's Tonys are going to be a four hour multi-platform streaming event. If you're not in the US, there are going to be some ways to watch internationally. So depending on where in the world you are, you can look up how to watch. But starting at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, the Tony Awards are going to start with a pre-show streaming exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. That pre-show is gonna be hosted by Julianne Huff and Darren Chris, who fun fact are both on Broadway this season. I didn't even realize Darren is in American Buffalo and Julianne is in POTUS. Immediately following that, we've got the Tony Awards airing live on CBS and Paramount+. Plus. And we've got Academy Award winner Ariana DeBose hosting the main ceremony. She's doing everything nowadays. She's killing it. I saw that she's gonna be in a superhero movie, she's going to be in Westworld. We just gotta get her back on Broadway so that she can win her Tony Award. Speaking of which, Let's talk about this year's nominees. So earlier this week, the Tony Award nominations were finally announced and surprisingly, a lot went down. Some good, some rough, some shocking. 34 different Broadway shows in total were eligible and 29 of them have received at least one nomination, which seems like a nice distribution. I feel like that'll make for an interesting season. Something worth noting, of course, the Tony Awards are fun. It's great to recognize and celebrate outstanding work, but awards aren't everything. They're subjective. Something Rotten famously did a really funny campaign after losing the Tony. They started saying how they're joining the ranks of all those other Broadway flops, those Tony Award losers like Wicked and Beauty and the Beast. So just goes to show, take it with a grain of salt. It's really a night for us to all get together and celebrate the thing that we love. It's also a big commercial for the Broadway season. Let's start with the high point. A Strange Loop is nominated for 11 Tonys, including of course, Best Musical. It's an early favorite and a front runner. People have been praising its originality. I'm really curious to learn more about it. I don't know that much and I'm hoping to see it. You've also got a historic nomination for Elle Morgan Lee. She's up for Best Supporting Actress and she's the first openly trans actress to be nominated for a Tony. Next up, tied with 10 nominations each, you've got Paradise Square and MJ, the Michael Jackson bio musical. We've got a whopping seven nominees for best leading actor in a play, including all three actors in the Lehman trilogy. Broadway icon Patti Lapone is nominated for her eighth Tony Award for her work in Company. She's also been a very hot topic of conversation recently due to a viral video. If you don't know, Patti kind of has a history of calling out disrespectful audience members or anyone who's putting the safety of the actors or patrons at risk. So at a talk back for company, a theater goer recently didn't want to comply with the Broadway mask mandates and Patty basically said, 
put on your mask or GTFO. And then the audience member said, I pay your salary. To which Patty said, no. So that was cathartic. Anyway, let's talk about the Tony nomination snubs because I kind of feel like there are a lot of them. There were no acting nominations for Six the Musical. I thought for sure at least one of the queens was gonna get nominated, if not two. There's been a growing conversation in years about the need for a best ensemble category, and this is definitely re-sparking that conversation. No best revival nomination for Funny Girl, no nods to Beanie, Ramin, or Jane Lynn. Funny Girl has had kind of a bumpy time, but I was still anticipating more nominations. We had some pretty big celebrities on Broadway this season, which is something that we've been talking about as we've been gearing up to the Broadway reopening. And a couple of them didn't get nominated. Like ones that genuinely surprised me. Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick for Plaza Suite. Daniel Craig for Macbeth. Deborah Messing was in Birthday Candles. We did get nominations though for Hugh Jackman, Sam Rockwell, and Billy Crystal. Personally, what I'm the most shocked about is seeing that Katrina Lenk wasn't nominated. She of course won Best Leading Actress just a few years ago for the band's visit, and now she's leading the revival of Company as Bobby. I love Company, I love Katrina, that role and that show are total nomination bait. I'm so confused and I'm like really disappointed. Does anyone else feel this way? Were there any other nominations that totally surprised you or snubs that totally shocked you? Also. I always see this question and confusion online, so I figured now would be a good time to clear it up. For the Tony Awards, a production can only be nominated the year that it opens on Broadway. Longer running shows like Phantom of the Opera or The Lion King can't get nominated again. Revivals of shows can be nominated, but only because they're a fully new production of that show. National tours and off-Broadway productions are also not eligible. It has to be on Broadway. Needless to say, I'm I'm very excited for the Tony Awards and I'm very curious to see how this is all gonna play out. But those are just my thoughts. I wanna hear from you. What do you think about these nominations, the Tony Awards, everything we discuss? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, hit subscribe, join the musical theater internet cult. Thanks again to Karma for sponsoring today's video. You can click the link down below to download the Chrome extension. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.